since I was very young, I've always had a very strong passion to feed animals, feed people, take care of people who are sick, and to watch over old people. It's been a very strong passion of mine, even when I was very young, growing up in New Jersey. And I genuinely enjoy the company of old people. I enjoy the company of people um, who are down and out, listen to them and talk to them. So at the age of 15, I left my home to pursue my dreams and to pursue my ambitions and to pursue my calling. My parents weren't very happy with that. I didn't have their support. I didn't have their blessings and I did not have their permission. But I left anyway. And my parents had told me that if I'd gone off to pursue what I wanted to do, that they would basically disown me. I agreed to it and they did disown me. It was a very sad time, but I figured it would be better to pursue what I wanted to do that was very strong in me than to simply be comfortable at home. When I left home in New Jersey, as everybody knows, it's a 3,000 mile trek across the United States. My intention was to get to Hawaii. I hitchhiked across the United States, across the southern and midwestern states, because it would be warmer as the time when I was leaving was already in the fall, around October, around that time, and the weather would have been very cold in the north, I figured as a child. Along the way, I begged. Along the way, I asked. Along the way, I acquired food from various people, sometimes apple here or there or a free meal here or there. It was quite difficult. There were times I didn't eat, and I uh, stayed outside, slept outside, and basically had, a very, had to rough it out in the weather. And at that time, I realized what it felt like to be hungry, to have no place to go, to have no one to care for you, to have no home, to have no security, and to not know what's going to happen to you tonight, tomorrow, the next day, and to live literally not even day by day, but really hour by hour. And I hitchhiked because I felt the passion in me that I'd rather go and pursue my calling than to sit home and be comfortable. And I said to myself, it will be all the way or bust. Basically, I'd rather die trying than stay home not trying. And that passion was very strong in me. It still is as an adult. So those years, those lean years that I experienced made a very strong impact on me. So everywhere I went throughout the world, I would always go and feed the poor, feed the homeless, or feed those who are not making enough ends meet. I don't expect anything back. I don't want anything back. I'm not looking for anything back. The only thing I wish back is that their stomach is full. So I've been doing that for the last three, two decades, three decades <coughs> in the monasteries. I would often go to the villages to feed the poor, to bring them um, rations for the month, many kgs of rice and lentils, flour, and other necessities that may need. I also found many, many sponsors in a monastery for monks at that time to take care of their monthly sustenance. And then um, I've been doing that for many years. So when I had the honor to abide and reside in Malaysia, I didn't see outward poverty. I didn't see really people who were starving or people who were really down and out, obviously. But when I go into the inner cities or to downtown, I did notice there are some homeless people. And, and I've spoken to some of them, and they all have different stories. Some are by choice. Some due to circumstances. Some due to not having anyone to take care of them. Some are mentally challenged, so they have different views, and they'd rather be alone. But whatever it is, when they're hungry, they're hungry. To me, it didn't matter what color they were or what background they came from or what gender or um, what beliefs they had. When you're hungry, you're hungry. So I started going out and buying halal, vegetarian foods, drinks, and going on the streets and distributing them. <coughs> and I have a few very close friends and students who used to follow me or when I couldn't go, I would ask them to go and do it. 
And I would encourage my friends, I would encourage people to take some money out and feed them. Some thank you and some don't thank you, but it doesn't matter because it's not about them thanking you. It's about yourself, it's about you and your conscience, it's about you and the divine being. It is about you and the divine being. It is not about them or others. And sometimes when we do work, when we get very disappointed, when we get very sad, we are bringing our work down to that it is between us and that person. Perhaps they were ungrateful. It is that person that made me feel sad or down. But you have to understand, when you do work, it's not about that person. It's about you doing something good for that person, and it's good for you as a person. It's morally, ethically correct. It makes you a better human being. And if you believe in a higher force, it's between you and a supreme being. So therefore, <coughs> it doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter if they appreciate you. You still have to help because it's not about their appreciation. It's about you and why you're doing it. So that's very important to remember sometimes when we are disappointed. Anyways, um, many years ago, I started a Kichara soup kitchen. Kichara soup kitchen. Kichara is a word for peace, for a place of peace, for a place that we can ascend to. There's peace, happiness, love, and care. Maybe in other languages, we can call it heaven. Chinese, maybe Shang Tian. But in Sanskrit, it actually means a place of peace, a place to rest, a place of repose. Kichara soup kitchen, soup, food for the homeless, kitchen is where we make it. And when I initially started it, we didn't have a premise, we didn't have a vehicle, we didn't have much support, not many people. Volunteers were difficult to get because people always find reason to be busy. They always find reason to be preoccupied. And some reasons are very good. So eventually our <coughs> Kichara soup kitchen started to grow. More volunteers came, more homeless people were waiting for us every week to give food out. So I decided to have a registered society and to do it officially. And after a few <coughs> ups and downs, I asked my good friend, confidant, and student of many years, Dr. Ruby Kong, to be the president. And we've known each other for over a decade, and we have a very good relationship. She's like my sister. She's my friend, she's my confidant, she's also my student. We've had a very good, clean, productive, helpful, beneficial relationship for many years, and I do appreciate Dr. Ruby very much. She's a lady that when she promises you do something, she will do it. She's a lady that honors her word. If for any mitigating circumstance, circumstances she cannot fulfill her promise, she will explain and tell you straightforward and that's okay because sometimes we just can't get things done. But that's rare and few in between. But most of the time, what she says, she, she will do. So when she took over Kichara Soup Kitchen as the president, we had a nice talk and I basically said to her, hunger has no barriers. Feed the poor, take care of them. You've had a good life. Your husband loves you. Your children respect you. Your family is good. Your situation is good, and you're basically still young, and you have your whole life ahead of you, and we have to do more now than just enjoy and relax and have a good life in our beautiful country of Malaysia. We have to do more. She agreed. So she put all her effort and all her energy in to feed the poor, and now we are having soup kitchen vans go all over the city to deliver food to people who cannot come to the soup kitchen. Also, we are delivering over 1,200 packets of food per week. I am very happy about that. Just imagine 1,200 packets to 1,200 homeless people per week. I am not gloating or showing off, but I am genuinely very happy about that. And therefore, um, we're not going to stop here. Recently, we've acquired a premises it's been spent, sponsored, and we've opened the premises, and today, today, we are very fortunate that our own very 
our own very leaders and government support our deeds and support our efforts toward alleviate, alleviating some of the hunger of the homeless. We are not competing with the government. We are not any governmental organizations. We are not affiliated with any political sides or any type of, <coughs> excuse me, political parties. We are not affiliated. We are not interested in politics or who's doing what because we are not qualified to know what's going on. Our job is simple. We saw people who are hungry and we decided to feed them. And that's all we will do. And sometimes some light medical assistance, such as if there's a scratch, maybe we wipe it off with an antiseptic and put a, a sticker on it, a Band-Aid on it, maybe a Panadol here and there, maybe even just a wipe. So we do it out of love for fellow citizens. And we appreciate so much that our government of Malaysia gives us their support, their blessings, and their care to encourage us to do more of this. And we will do more. Today we are very blessed and we are very honored because the Prime Minister's own wife, the First Lady of Malaysia, and I want to get her name right because their names are, the names here are very long and very exotic. Very beautiful, in fact. The First Lady of Malaysia, Her Excellency, Yang Bahaja Datin Paduka Sri Razma Mansur, herself, has arrived in KSK or Kechara Soup Kitchen. Along with Dato Sri Sharizat, the Minister of Women's Affairs, Community and Development, and also the Chairman of Tourism, Dato Dr. Victor Wee, and many other very special guests and special people have graced the occasion. The First Lady of Malaysia, as I speak now, is in KSK. She has done the ribbon cutting ceremony and she has signed the official opening plaque. We of Kichara House, we of Kichara Soup Kitchen, we thank Her Excellency and we also thank Dato Sharizat and Dato We very, very much for giving us their blessings and their good wishes and to take time away from their extremely hectic schedule to honor and grace our occasion. Today, Kichara Soup Kitchen is officially opened, is officially functioning, is officially a homeless soup kitchen. Kichara Soup Kitchen, or we call affectionately in short, KSK makes a promise that we will give food. We will give solace without any intention but to feed the poor. We will continue our work from now on and in the future. We will not be talking to them about other issues. We will not be talking about religion. We will not be talking about political uh, background. We will not talk about um, uh, people or this or that. We are only there to give them food and to take care of their hunger. So this is what we promise to do in the future, continue to do. And I wish to make Kichara Soup Kitchen along with Dato Ruby and the blessings of our government to be even bigger and better and grow all over the nation. And the reason is, I would like this work to carry on even after I am dead. Why? This work doesn't depend on me or who I am or how I started it. This work depends on a nation's conscience towards taking care of the less fortunate, to have a compassionate outlook, a compassionate outreach towards those who are going through difficult times. All of us have our ups and downs. Everyone deserves a helping hand. So this is what I wish we wish to do. So today I would like to thank our First Lady, Dato Sri Sharizat, 
Dato Dr. Victor Wee, Dato Ruby Kong, the President of Kichara House, Dato Mei Peng, and all of our distinguished guests and the hardworking committee and staff and volunteers at Kichara Soup Kitchen. I would like to thank very much for the opening, your hard work, your dedication, and mostly your compassion towards the poor, towards the homeless, towards those who have obstacles or difficulties in their life. And I request everyone to offer up your good wishes that we may do even a better job now and in the future that we can serve society. And may we humbly request that we can become a inspiration for lack of a better word, <coughs> that other people can start the same thing everywhere in this great nation, in this region, and in the world. To not sit home and be comfortable and shake your head at disasters and shake your head at the misfortunes of others, but to get up and get out and do something. We all can do something. Again, I thank the Malaysian government, Her Excellency, the First Lady, and our distinguished guests, Dato Ruby, very much for this incredibly exciting and wonderful occasion. And I personally wish Kichara to further reach out to benefit however we can the society on a whole. Hunger has no barriers. Thank you. <laughs>